my wife wanted to upgrade the refrigerator. My logic was, well, if we're going to upgrade the refrigerator, we should might as well hook up the RO system to the refrigerator. So we have a few things that are here now. Um, this is my old RO system that I'm going to be upgrading. It's your standard bulk resupply, uh, 75 gallon per day system, uh, which uh, we put the 150 gallon upgrade on already. Um, comes down to two barrels, which are my fresh and my salt water mixing stations. Then we got this tank, which I'm going to use as the storage unit for storing water for the refrigerator. One of the first steps is going to be physically mounting uh, the parts. So we start mounting the DI canisters, I'm trying to lay it out so that everything's accessible. I'm going to be turning off the water and draining the product line so that you can actually have, <laughs> don't squirt yourself with water, which is kind of a pain in the butt. As many of the locks as I can are going to have these locks on them, or as many of the push connected ends as I can are going to have those locks on them. I'm going to unmount this canister, start moving all the lines around and putting on the carbon filter, taking out the DI. I'm going to save this DI in a plastic bag so that I have a uh, brand new DI and then this used DI will be right here and this will be carbon. This is the back of the deionization filter. Basically, here's my two product lines coming out of my two R membranes and they're going to come down here through this valve. This valve detects back pressure so that it can turn off the RO system and then it comes around here and goes to the DI. What we're actually going to end up doing is we're going to be taking out of this last carbon block, putting it right into the next carbon block and then taking out of the front and that'll be going to the DI. Okay, proof that no project goes perfect. Uh, installed the pump here and that's working great. We're running the system up right now. Um, everything works exactly the way I'd want it to for the DI system and the way I found everything. Come down here, this is to the pressure vessel. Uh, two things that I made a mistake on. One, the permeate pump, which is supposed to use the pressure from the brine water, which they call, which is basically the wastewater from your RO system, and then it helps pressurize the DI or the output of the RO system, so that you end up using less brine or less wastewater, and to make more product water. That does the same thing. So I wasted a little bit of money on that pump. I'll probably be selling it online. And then the other thing I forgot was um, buy more hose. So I have a lot of this white hose and I'm going to buy some red hose to uh, finish it off and really make it look nice. And the white hose is going to be my DI system and that's going to come, or the RO system that comes up over the wall, down, and then it'll go through that wall to the refrigerator. And the pressure vessel seems to be holding water. No leaks at this time. So everything's going pretty well. So the system's been set up. The uh, no dual TDS meter is set up here. So this one will tell me when this cartridge is depleted. And then I swap this one here and add a new one back here. I also have another meter on the output to double check that. We have the setup right now for the booster pump. So it runs at 90 PSI now. And this is the vessel John gave me. Thank you again, John. All done, project complete.